Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and today we're going to be talking about what it's been like to live with a Bentley, a real Bentley. This is the 2007 Mark II Azure, and the Azure is a masterpiece of classic Bentley mechanics and styling, although it did fall under the responsibility of Volkswagen in 2007. This really does show the last of what old school Bentley had to offer with its six and three quarter liter V8, but Volkswagen retooled it with twin turbos instead of the single Garrett turbo that it had earlier on in the Continental T and, if you might remember, in the Silver Spur that I drove recently. Over the past couple weeks, I've had the distinct privilege of putting a few hundred miles on this Azure and really getting a chance to feel what it's like because on a 30, 40, 50 mile drive, you don't figure out all of the oddball idiosyncrasies or as Doug DeMiro likes to call them, quirks and features. But if you do spend some time with these cars, you start to really figure them out. So I'd like to talk about why this Azure might be the perfect vehicle for some of you and an easy hard pass for the rest of you. So let's jump in and take it for a ride. Today we're gonna go top up because it's a serious discussion. We're not out chasing lighthouses like we were in Maine, but I, it must be noted that this roof is just enormous. It's absolutely outrageous how much real estate that covers. And inside the car, the headliner is beautiful and it matches the leather. What you might also notice is that these rear seats have plenty of room back here. And even with the roof up, there's plenty of headroom. That's pretty wild that you can fit four full-size adults. I'm 5'9", and I am nowhere near touching the top, even if I stand up as tall as I can in my seat. I've got a fairly long torso and short legs, so you could treat my torso like a 5'10", dude, right? The rear passengers get window controls for this side rear glass, although one glaring omission in the rear seats is an armrest. There is no center armrest back here, but that's fine. You will just sink into your beautiful leather couch. And down here on this tiered rocker panel, we see Azure. Now I feel some raindrops coming. I think it's time to jump in the car and go for a drive. On our Bentley key fob, we've got our slow to open key, as noted by Jeremy Clarkson when he drove the Arnage T. And then our steering wheel drops into place. Make sure that fuel pump's good and we're ready to start. Now we've discussed in previous videos with the Azure, this engine is really wild. It was essentially designed, I think in the 1950s, but historically the components of this vehicle are really wild that they carried on into the early 2000s. This is a 4,500 RPM red line. So all of this is just riding low end torque. Even the pedals feel old school with the brake pedal going straight down into the floor and this wild e-brake or parking brake as some of you like to call it on a strut. But I will show you one quirk of the vehicle when we pull it to release. Oftentimes the brake light does not go out so you've got to kind of fiddle with it a little bit and there it goes. So sometimes you just have to be in tune with your Bentley to get it to operate as necessary. Although we've got this large twin turbo V8 in front of us, it's almost entirely silent. And everything about this vehicle screams old money, even these gauges. We don't have some barking turbos like we do on that truck in front of us. It just wafts along in silence because it's designed not to disturb the passengers. There's really no fancy technology in the vehicle when it comes to creature comfort. It's very standard. And in fact, this is something I like a lot about the Azure is that I don't have to go hunting for things. There's just nice, normal buttons. Everything is very user friendly. Taking off in an aggressive manner is not something this vehicle does all that well. You always wanna just ease into that throttle because it has so much torque, 645 pound feet of it, that when you do jump into it, it wants to spin up the rears very quickly and then you're greeted with an aggressive traction control system. So you do just drive it like you're moving a boat. You know, you just give mild control inputs and allow it to do its thing. You suggest where you'd like it to go with both the steering and the throttle. And we've got another British friend with this beautiful E-Type. Hello. Yes, that's a sound. Getting a bit of a sun shower here, but we've got the roof up, so I'm not complaining. I think the best way to describe the Azure, living with the Azure, it's like a fancy restaurant. You know, the nicest restaurant in town. But when you start pulling back the curtains, when you look behind the kitchen, you still might find a couple rats and roaches here and there. It's not perfect. But at the end of the day, the image of you being at that restaurant is worth something and the food is phenomenal. 
What I'm trying to say with the analogy is that even though something appears to be completely prestigious, completely out of this world, super luxury, it is still just a car at the end of the day. An expensive car and a well-engineered, overbuilt car, but a car nonetheless. You might notice that there's no roll bar in the vehicle, which means that in order to keep this thing rigid and braced properly, the underside of this car is crisscrossed with monster steel reinforcement. Because in order to keep this 6,000 or almost 6,000 pound convertible intact and without flexing its way to its own death around a corner, it needed to have outrageous reinforcement. And I think this is where the Bentley Mark gets away with murder because they're essentially in a class of their own. You could argue that there's an S-Class convertible and all these other funky cars. I mean, today you can get an 8 Series that's far more capable than this Bentley Azure and you could get it for a heck of a lot less money. But it doesn't have the charm and I think charm is worth a lot. Isn't that the old saying from Pulp Fiction, personality goes a long way? Because it really does. I would have this no other way. I don't want this necessarily to go around a corner faster. I don't want it to accelerate faster. I love the character of this Azure, even though it costs a lot of money to keep fuel in it. In fact, there's a 20 something gallon tank in here. I've put $80 into it and uh, it's not pretty. It's not pretty when you sit and put 20, ga 20 gallons into a tank that wasn't empty. Oh my goodness and your right foot is directly connected to how much money you're about to spend in fuel expenses. So if you're like me and you're not trying to max out your credit cards at a shell station, then maybe you'd be a little gentle on that throttle. The steering is light and although I can't feel everything going on in the front, the car moves where I tell it to. You're not gonna make any brash motions in the car, however, because the car doesn't encourage you to make brash motions. You just suggest where you'd like it to go and it follows suit. If you're somebody with a lot of money who's gotten a lot of tickets and had problems with the law because you're driving around too fast in your McLaren or Ferrari, go buy yourself an old Bentley because I assure you, you will not get a speeding ticket except except for the fact that if you're like me and you try to recover energy, let's say you want to not use the brakes on a downhill piece of road, this will gather speed so quickly like a soapbox derby car and the momentum is outrageous because of the weight. Unless that cop is sitting at the bottom of the hill while you're not braking, that's when you're going to have problems. But really, other than that, it's so content just wafting along at about 70 miles an hour. When I picked up this particular Azure in Maine, it had about 4,400 miles on it. We're at about 4,680 right now. And I don't think I want to be the one to bring it over 5,000. And I think that says more about me than the owner. The owner said, go enjoy it for a few months, have fun. I feel so guilty bringing this baby of an Azure, this time capsule, over 5,000 miles. I don't know that I want to be the one to do it. So I am going to give him a call at about 4,800 miles and say, look, are you sure? Are you sure you want me to break the 5,000 mile mark? Because the values of these cars did in fact just go up. Even since the last video I just made in Maine with this car, these were going for anywhere from 70 to 110, $115,000 one very, very similar to this car with less miles, about 3,000 miles, sold for $251,000 on Bring a Trailer. Now, is that an anomaly or is that just the way the market is going? I don't know yet, but this car may be quite a bit more valuable than it once was even a few months ago. You can't talk about a Bentley without talking about the image that you're portraying to the world while you're driving it. Because unlike a supercar, where everyone thinks you're just some maniac hot rod racer that doesn't care about anybody, the Bentley has a little bit of different esteem. And unlike the mobster giant Cadillacs, you don't necessarily look like a drug dealer. You look a little more like a boss. And a boss without the, let's say, kingpin identity. The perception of a Bentley like this also is that it has a perfect suspension that insulates you from the entire world. I hate to burst your bubble, but you definitely feel some things and you will hear some things as well. The rear suspension over some clunky bumps like this will act up and make some noise. Noises that I, I'm getting from my sort of worn suspension in my M3. While of course the car is still quite soft, it's not without its realistic expectations of a car from 2007 and of course a car that was hand built. 
So while you're certainly insulated from the world and detached from most of what's not inside the vehicle, it is still a car. It is still a fancy restaurant, still must operate. It still has grumpy management and, 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 and pest problems to deal with. So that's what you get with a hand-built vehicle. Although on the highway, that's where it really shines. When I first drove this car, I felt completely out of place. I felt like a fish out of water. It did not feel like anything I wanted to spend a considerable amount of time in, especially because of the way it handles, the chassis dynamics of the vehicle, the way you have to put inputs into it to get what you want was just so unordinary to me. It was not what I'm used to. I like little sports cars, little light sports cars. This is why I like Porsches, Caterhams, even BMW M3s, although they're a little hefty. But this, this was just a totally different experience. But having spent a few hundred miles in it, I started to appreciate it more and more, and I started to really enjoy the way it made me feel. Oh, look at this T-Bird, that's fantastic. I just started to enjoy the way it made me feel because as a driver, I relaxed. I didn't feel this amped up caffeine infused need to get somewhere in record time. In fact, I felt a breath of fresh air, a relaxation that I had not felt on the road in a very long time or ever. And I'm starting to understand why someone would go through the pain of owning a car that has such a rigorous maintenance schedule. What I've learned from this 07 Mark II Azure isn't necessarily that I have to have one, and I certainly couldn't afford to maintain one with my humble means at the moment, but it does inform me that I genuinely enjoy oddball cars with some heritage, with some character, because the same way that I love driving 1960s Ferraris, although they may be kind of a pain and sometimes don't want to start, or sometimes stop running while you're driving them, <laughs> or sometimes backfire, and sometimes require heavy maintenance, I also love this Azure. Because what I'm realizing is that it's not being the perfectly engineered masterpiece of modern technology that gets me going. It's having a car that I have to communicate with, that communicates back to me, and that we bond over, but still delivers a primal and enjoyable driving experience. But if nothing else gets you excited about the Azure like it does for me, there's always a giant wave of torque right under your right foot. So for now, I say goodbye to this beautiful Bentley because it's going to rain and I don't have anywhere indoors to store it. So it goes back to Garage 42 so my humble M3 can come back out and live in my driveway. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Of course, thank you to the Patreon supporters for making this content possible. And obviously, obviously to Chris, the owner of this gorgeous Azure, for being trusting enough to hand over the keys to one of his prized possessions and, and letting me just enjoy it for the sake of enjoying it. Don't forget to respect the drive and I'll see you in the next one. But what I'm saying is the image associated with these cars is almost as important as the car itself. I took this to a wedding and it fit right in. Although the only problem is because I'm not an old graying Italian man with chest hair protruding through my dress shirt, I'm a skinny, not that tall, not that wealthy looking 33 year old young man, right? Young man. I still get to be a young man. I hope uh, I, 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 I looked more like the help. I, I got out of the car wearing a black suit and vest. And I just, I don't think I was really looked at as if I own the vehicle. Rather, I looked like the driver hired to drive the owner of the vehicle. So maybe I should have been wearing tweed, okay? Maybe a black suit in my style was wrong, but that's okay.